So, in, why don't you introduce yourselves? I am Diane Monte Catania, and I'm the pastor of the Salisbury Congregational Church in Northwest Connecticut. Welcome, Diane. Thank you. Hi, I'm Reverend Sarah Smith. I'm senior minister at United Congregational Church in downtown Bridgeport, and I'm chair of the board of directors and founder of the Norma Freem Urban Outreach Initiatives, Inc., our not-for-profit. Great. Welcome, Sarah. Thanks. Hi, I'm Reverend Bridget Fiddler, and I'm the pastor of First Church of Christ Congregational in Suffield, Connecticut. Welcome, Bridget. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Fiddler, and I'm the pastor of the West Suffield Congregational Church in West Suffield, Connecticut. And we welcome Eric to our gathering. Thank you all for being here um, for this edition of Vantage Point. We're um, talking about our vision here in the Connecticut Conference, and that vision is about interdependence and about connecting with each other. All four of you are part of partnerships with your churches, and so we wanted to let our listeners and viewers today hear a little bit about what's happening with your churches. So I'm going to invite Diane to start and tell us what's happening between you and Sarah's congregation. Well, we started a number of years ago. Uh, Sarah and I had met in a clergy group, and I heard what was happening in Bridgeport, what kind of programs they were working on, and it was the same time that in Salisbury we were looking for opportunities to turn outward from the church, to look out into the community, to, um, to find ways to live our faith. And uh, Bridgeport was able to provide that for us. So we help with dinners, with food drives, uh, with a variety of activities. Great. And Sarah, what's your perspective on what's well, going on? Well, we thought we needed to, the only way we would work is to throw our doors open and help our neighbors, but we can't do it alone. Mm. And we all need to support the biggest city on the East Coast. Um, so um, we were looking for mission partners, and I got to know this one, and we hit it off. And so we just started talking. And I want to make sure, though, it's a two-way street. They help us, they give us funding to do our programs, they come and volunteer, but we give them a chance to be transformed. And that has been what's been so marvelous about mm -hmm. our, and so we are our covenant, which is a good UCC thing to do. Mm -hmm. We're interdependent, mm -hmm. which makes our conference minister happy. <laughs> and uh, we, but we're living it out. Our people know each other. Now we're getting ready to do this big joint retreat at our Silver Lake Conference Center where we come and teach them a little bit about global music and how folks other than white folks sing. And um, it's going to be good. And so it goes both ways. And it's, it just enlivened all of us. That's wonderful. It's um, exciting to hear about what's developing and about the interdependence and the mutuality that's being built and using Silver Lake, a place where, where our churches can gather together. So thanks for sharing a little bit about what's happening between your two congregations. Bridget, would you tell us um, a little bit about your partnership? Mm -hmm. So Eric and I have been working together for about four and a half years, born out of necessity. I don't like working alone, and mm -hmm. I was working alone. and. Um, I look at my neighbors, uh, what, regardless of denomination, as collaborators. And so uh, Eric and I were a natural team. Our churches um, were once one church, mm -hmm. and um, in many ways we don't see the division anymore. So we started out talking about youth and how we could support one another because they had adult volunteers and we had kids. And somehow that seemed like a natural collaboration didn't actually work out that well, mm -hmm. but it didn't deter us. We just kept trying out different things. And so we um, started doing Cathedral in the Night. Uh, we've just, uh, in Northampton, and we just did one of those where both churches served that in that outdoor um, church ministry and food mission. Uh, we do Bible study together. We are going to be doing Lenten study together. Mm -hmm. So we just uh, naturally begin to think about doing everything together because we are um, well, up until recently, I was a solo minister, and Eric is, is also, you know, working on his own, so. Right. Right. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Eric, how about your comments about this partnership? Yeah, I mean, I echo a lot of what Bridget said. Um, same thing is that we work very well together, and part of it is um, also recognizing the demographic of Suffield. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the nature of New England is you can't swing a cat without hitting a UCC church, and that's just the nature of it. But unfortunately, the, the landscape of ministry is changing, and so we have to work together. We either, uh, and Bridget and I see that, and a lot of the, the folks in our church see it, is that we either work together or we decline separately. Mm -hmm. But together we grow, and the divisions, the things that separated our church was uh, the first great awakening. Well, we've come a couple of years and things have changed <laughs> since that, you know, since Jonathan Edwards came and was preaching sinners in the hands of an angry God. So, also recognizing that 
we were also finding that the history of our church was some people would get upset at one of our churches, they'd march down to the other one. They'd right. get upset at that one, they'd march down to the other. Right. But when we looked at our churches, we said, listen, like we're siblings here. Why shouldn't we bring it back into the family? And the incredible thing that I've seen is the response from the congregation is they love it. So that every time that we collaborate and we begin to do things together as opposed to resisting it, there's such a joy that they're doing it with friends or sometimes family members that belong to that other church. Mm -hmm. And as Bridget said, we're doing Bible study together. There's more people there. We're doing mission together and there's more people there. I mean, and so we're, we're able to have a more critical mass, which then makes the experience that much more enjoyable. And it's incredible to see the different ways. It, it was wonderful to, to hear the other churches talk about how there's a mutuality there. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we have, mm -hmm. is that um, each of our congregations has different gifts to offer the other. And to also see that sometimes things work and sometimes they don't, but we're constantly seeing, well, what are we going to do together next? Mm -hmm. right. Wonderful. Well, I am grateful to you all for sharing your stories. One of the things that we're doing as we talk about meeting one another, about mutuality, about interdependence, is finding churches that are engaged and cooperating in ways like these examples here today. So we're grateful for your ministries. We're grateful for you being experimenters, out front leaders um, in this idea that we actually need each other. Thank you and blessings to you and your ministries. Thank, Thank you. you.